How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ, The Basics. In this episode, we're going to talk all about animations, how to use them, what every tab and drop down menu does. I'm also going to show you how to use effects here to import some of your own particle effects. First of all, you'll open your database by clicking on the cogwheel. Then you'll navigate down to the animations tab and left click. Inside here, you'll see a bunch of animations populate. In order to create your own, you're probably going to want to scroll down to the bottom and change the maximum so that you have some free space. Then click on a new space where we're going to add our new animation. Now we have some options to go over. At the top, we have general settings where we can give a name to our animation. Underneath that, we have the display type. It has three options. The first one says for each target, and this will cause the animation to display on every single target. The next one is center of all targets, and it will play the animation a single time in the general area of where the enemies are. And the final one is center of the screen, and this will cause the animation to play a single time in the center of the screen. Underneath that, we have particle effect, and you'll see the word file name because we're looking for a specific effects here animation file name an EFK EFC file to be specific. And if you scroll down here, this has changed quite a bit from MV to MZ. We have this really cool particle display now where we can see all of the animations displayed in real time. I love that little additional feature inside the engine playing it. So that's really cool. Once you find one that you like, you can select it. And then we can click on the play button to show that animation. In order to change that animation, we have a few options like scale, speed, rotation, offset X, and offset Y. The scale is simply changing the size of the overall image. We cannot distort one parameter without distorting the other. For example, if we change the X, it's also going to change the Y. And we don't have like X scale, Y scale. We just have a general scale. Let's change the scale 200. Oh, it's a super big heel. Let's change the speed to 50%. So it's twice as big and it plays twice as long. Cool. Really, really neat. And then we can change the rotation. Z rotation. Oh, now it blasts the whole screen. Isn't that cool? Let's give it a negative 90 degree rotation and you see it flying away so it kind of charges in. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's sick. Oh, I love it. It's so good. And do you see how we just changed that animation quite a bit by changing some rotation, speed, and scale? We can give it an offset. Let's bring it down. If you add to the X, it'll move it to the right. If you subtract from the X, it'll move it to the left. If you add to the Y, it'll move it down. If you subtract from the Y, it'll bring it up. Just for the sake of using these offsets, let's bring it down into the left a little bit. To go left, we'll subtract from the X. So let's say 24, negative 24. Add to the Y, so we'll add 24. So now it's a little bit more to the bottom left, and it kind of goes to the top right. So I think that looks pretty good. We've created a custom animation, but we need to add some sounds and some flash. So double click here. Select the frame that you would like the sound effect to be played on. I'm going to bring the pitch down because we slowed down the animation. When you're dropping the speed of the particle effect, you can also drop the pitch to create a nice, powerful effect. Typically, these animations will have between 30 and 120 frames. Quite frequently, I see 60 frames and 90 frame animations being used. Unfortunately, it doesn't say exactly how many frames, but if you pay attention by putting in sound effects, you can kind of figure out. Like, for example... We can hear that the coin effect is playing at the end of that animation, so it's probably closer to 120. And you can figure out how many frames by playing around with that. We'll call it Sparkle Heal. You can use whatever application you like to make your own particle effect. We're going to make a little sprite that we're going to use inside effects here. A simple, tiny little sprite. You just want something. You can say that you made it and you don't really have to work too hard to make it. You can use Microsoft Paint if you want. Boom. So look, now I made this little particle effect. It's my own custom particle effect. Boom. I love it. It's great. Let's file and export this as a PNG file. But the reason why I'm doing this through an application is it's important to stress where you're saving your stuff. When you're going to reference this PNG file inside effects here, you want the file path to point to a specific folder. Inside your engine, 
you can go to game, open folder, and you'll see your game's folders location right here. We wanna save all of our PNG files for animations inside the game's effects texture folder. In here, you can see there's already a few built-in ones plus a few that I've added here. You're gonna add all of your custom ones in here. When we're saving it, we're gonna save it into this games effects texture folder. So let's do that. You can use Microsoft Paint, Paint.net, GIMP, Photoshop, whatever you want. I like a Sprite for stuff like that. Okay, so let's load up effects here now. We're gonna create a new project and we are going to click on a node and then click on the golden box that says basic render settings. Now we're going to load that texture by clicking on the load button, navigating into our games effects texture folder and finding that file my custom sprite. We've got it right there. Here we have our sprite. Let's change our view to 2D. I'm gonna click on the position, which is a blue crosshair thing. And I'm gonna click on PVA. And then I'm going to click on speed. We're gonna click on play and we're gonna see the particle effect start. But it's a tiny little particle effect and all we're doing is making it move in a direction. Let's change that up a little bit. On the golden star for basic settings, we're gonna change the spawn count to infinite. And then we're gonna change the spawn rate to three. Now we drew a very tiny sprite, so we're gonna change the scale a little bit. Let's go to the scale box and click on this to change it to three. Click on scaling factor and change those three to make it triple in size. Now here they're moving in a straight line. I don't necessarily want them all in a straight line, so I'm gonna add some deviation of 0.2. I'm actually gonna add some acceleration of 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, but some deviation of also 0 0.01. Now what's gonna happen is they'll spray in a general area, in a direction. It doesn't really matter what direction we use here because in RPG Maker MZ, you're gonna be able to change your rotation of the particle effect as well. If we change our view to 3D, we can see that we can move that around and then the camera can get all kinds of different views. Let's change one more thing. Let's add some color to it. I'm gonna click on render settings and then I'm going to click on one of these colors over here. Actually, I'm gonna click on random and I'll say anything from white all the way up to like a really dark purple. And then we have like this crazy spectrum of all the colors that can be from white to a dark purple. And now we have this trippy animation that we made. We're gonna do it all with one node. You can always add more nodes. This isn't a full effects here tutorial. In fact, we have longer effects here tutorials. My wife T has a series on effects here. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video if you're interested in learning more about effects here and making your own animations. But this is a scratch the surface, let you know that it's out there and how to use this to bring it into your engine. So let's export this now and save this as an EFK EFC file. So when we're done with our animation, we're gonna click on file, save as. We need to save our EFK EFC file into the effects folder. And you can see that there's a bunch of other ones right here. Now, hopefully if we did this right, we can save our project, close it, Open it up by opening the game, RPG MZ project, then go into our database animations. And when we go to select a particle effect, we should see, and it should play a particle animation. Oh my God, it works. My custom particle effect zero one has been added. And now if we play it, you see it sprays rainbow stuff that we created randomly, at which point you can add your own sound effects and then put that into your game however you wanna do that. And now that you know how to make your own animations, let's go over a couple ways that you can play your animations. The first way is in an event, and you can do that by placing an event down and double clicking in the contents box and clicking on tab two and click on show animation. Then you can select where you want the animation to be targeted, the player, this event, or any other event. Then you can choose which animation you want to play. And there's a whole bunch of really good animations. The next box will be wait for completion. And if this is checked, then the entire event will not continue until this animation is done. Another way is to play the animation in battle. To play it in battle, you simply attach the animation to the skill on the skills tab right here. And then when you play that in battle, it will play the animation. You can test play if you go to the troops. And here they play animations. You can see them. And you can just change the skills for the characters to test the animations that you want to see in game really quickly through the battle test. Let's take a look at it. So there we go. I couldn't move until that flashy one finished. So it started the one that we created and then it played the um, flashy one that we put up second. So we can see the animation that we created. And this is the Father Time. This is, an, this is art by Akashix. Shout out to Akashix. Father Time here is shining his radiant sparkles upon the world. 
and we created this sprite in a sprite and then put it into effects here created an efk efc file and put that into rpg maker mz to create our custom very unique and awesome animation that's our end result for that and that's going to do it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys found it helpful and informative. If you have, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already. Big shout out to Dejica for sponsoring this video. We love you guys very much. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.